So it looks like I got a little caught up in playing Shovel Knight 3DS last week that I didn't give you guys proper clarity of what I was going to look at for this week. And uh, because of that, I'm pretty sure a lot of you thought it was going to be ABGN Adventures, when in actuality I was planning on ending the next showcase with ABGN Adventures. So if that's what you're looking forward to, I'm, I'm sorry, not just yet. In the meantime, we have a bunch of other indie games to look at to fill out the weeks, thanks to you guys. It's kind of like a nice little indie cocktail. And here's one of the most requested of the bunch, Skullgirls. If 5 second reviews were ever a thing on this channel, I would feel absolutely comfortable in saying that Skullgirls is like Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom with a mostly female cast. If you like those two, you'll like Skullgirls. And now I know 5 second reviews will never be a thing on this channel, because I can't even stay under the required time limit. So we might as well go a bit deeper while we're at it. Skullgirls has a bit of a shaky past. Originally, it was released under Reverge Labs, then after that, post-production was just a mess. The entire staff of the game was laid off because of a lawsuit their publisher, Autumn Games, suffered from, and it looked like Skullgirls was just going to be a one-and-done fighting game with a measly eight-character roster. Not helping was Konami, which published the game in Japan, requesting to remove Skullgirls from the PlayStation Network and Xbox Live Arcade after showing no interest in further development of the indie title. Fortunately, things did take a turn for the better. The laid-off workers formed their own studio under the name of Lab Zero Games and continued to develop downloadable content and patches for Skullgirls thanks to the continued support of Autumn Games and funding from the community. That is certainly making lemonade out of lemons. Skullgirls was soon re-released as Skullgirls Encore, which is pretty much the default version of the game now. I'll be looking at the Steam version since support for the title seems chiefly focused on the PC with consoles getting the proper treatment at later dates. Actually, with that in mind, I know Skullgirls is getting another updated re-release called Second Encore, boasting additional characters and content, and yeah, I could have waited until then to give Skullgirls a look, but I'm not really too worked up about that because, well, first off, you guys wanted me to look at this now, and Skullgirls is something I've already played plenty of times before, additional content or otherwise. Like I said, it's really just Street Fighter and Marvel vs. Capcom with well-animated female characters and the infrequent male fighter here and there if you got the DLC. I was reminded of Darkstalkers from time the time too. Could be because of the high concept character designs, like Peacock here, instantly thought of BB Hood, you know, instead of the little red riding hood motif, she's like your worst nightmare if you never liked any of the classic merry melodies from the golden age. I could spend some time on the overall story, but it sort of feels stale, repetitious, and frankly depressing. There's this magical relic known as the Skull Heart that is known to grant the wish of any girl who can manage to grab it. However, if the person granting the wish should have any ounce of impurity in their soul, the Skull Heart can transform the Holder into a Skull Girl, a demonic entity that brings chaos and destruction to everything in sight. Nearly every girl's story focuses on their attempt on reaching the Skull Heart, either to make their own wish and hoping to avoid the curse, or just outright destroying the damn thing so that nobody can be harmed by it. Nonetheless, it seems nobody's allowed to have a happy ending here. These girls, more so the heroines, go through so much shit and have almost nothing to show for it at the end. Even Mortal Kombat had brighter endings. And it's weird too, because if we're talking in-game personalities, I love these characters. Battle dialogue is great, and not just when the fighters are trading insults. <laughs> Cheeseburger. That's racist. There's a lot of references to other games and films too. It baffles me that these energetic characters lead to such a inconsequential string of stories. And I often don't care about plots in a fighting game, chalk that up to past experiences. But if something's there, I at least like to give it a look at, give it the benefit of the doubt. But this shit bums me out. Maybe by second encore, the loose ends, the cliffhangers, and the underdeveloped stuff will get more exposure, but I'm not a fan of what's there now. Still, it's a fighting game, the thing I want to do the most is beat the shit out of things, and Skullgirls gets that part right. Delivering the pain with fierce punches, roundhouse kicks, and special techniques at breakneck speeds, combined with impressively fluid animations, and you got a 2D fighter that looks and sounds fantastic. And I don't just mean that sound bit for the soundtrack, which is smooth and goes great with a cup of coffee. It was composed with the assistance of Michiru Yamane, a personal favorite of mine thanks to her Castlevania work, but man, it sounds so great to land hits in this game. <laughs> yeah, this game is also quite over the top, if you know what I mean. I'm sure you noticed by now, it's filled to the brim with fan service. They shake, they bounce, they flash, and they mutate. I couldn't make a review without at least mentioning that much, but I'm not clever enough for a joke involving joysticks. In versus mode, you can choose teams of three, two, or just go at it with one character and duke it out with your opponent using a variety of combos, special chains, super attacks, and aerial raves. You can switch characters at any point to shift momentum or further prolong a painful combo, you can call for assist to give your opponent a surprise attack, or you can fine-tune your abilities with the game's training mode. Skullgirls is very user-friendly largely, like it's super simple to chain 7-8 hit combos whether on the ground or in mid-air, and doesn't feel as restrictive as the more dedicated fighters in the genre, even though this game was made by hardcore lovers of the tournament scene. It has a great tutorial for giving you the rundown, and options that the most dedicated fighter will glee over. There's something here for casuals just as much as for veterans, but god damn did I get my ass kicked online when I actually managed to find a match. I make a lobby and no one shows up. I had to do quick matches a lot. Can I just say, I absolutely hate it when I pick an open lobby and I'm kicked out of it. That's what private slots are for, jackass. I'm sorry, personal beef. I'm not gonna lie, online was discouraging really. 
Three different players subjected me to three different infinites. That's when opponents unleash a series of repetitious combos that prevents you from doing anything to counter. The game has this infinite prevention system specifically to counter this sort of issue, but because it's also so lax on what it considers an actual infinite, clever players can just get around this by switching from one combo to the next, and I'm not dedicated enough to learn infinites for myself to prevent that from happening. I don't think deeply skilled matches should be determined by who can perform the first infinite. At the same time, I guess it requires a great deal of skill to even perform one. I don't know. Infinite battles sound a little shallow on paper. It's probably only a big deal in the tournament scene though. If you're just looking for a solid 2D fighter that looks nice, sounds great, and want to challenge your friends in fan service filled slobber knockers when you're not in the mood for Street Fighter or Marvel vs. Capcom, you can't go wrong with Skullgirls, but wait until the second Encore release later this year. Firstly, as of now, you only have 8 characters to choose from, a paltry amount compared to other fighters. Three of the four available DLC characters are 5 bucks a piece, and as of this review, the character Beowulf is free for Steam players. There's also a $5 DLC for additional color palettes. Look, you know how this works with fighting games. Unless you're truly dedicated to it, you're better off just waiting for the re-release. I would, but a lot of you wanted to know what I thought of it now, so spending a total of $35 on this is your fault. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Skullgirls is an absolutely fine fighter. I wish there was a little more to it, but what it delivers is all right as is. Now the next review I'm working on is for Terraria, but that won't be going up by next week. I'm taking a small break for Momocon 2015. If you're in the Atlanta, Georgia area from May 28th to the 31st and haven't bought your passes yet, what are you doing? I'm going to be there for the whole event along with my brain scratch crew and my live stream co-host Nathan. We're going to have a panel, charity live stream, an autograph session. It's going to be a blast and I hope to see you guys there. And then when I get back, I'm going to kick my feet up and relax with Terraria. In the meantime, thank you guys for watching, have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care.